Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Why did I start recording while I'm brushing my teeth? Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to come back into the world of video making uh, with a series that I dropped kind of a long time ago. We're going to make a car in automation. We're going to test it in Beam and G Drive. Uh, I used to have a lot of fun with these series, especially uh, making the, the backstory for the cars up uh, after the fact. Uh, you can check out the cars that I featured before. They are mostly all available on the repository for Beam and G Drive if you search their names. Um, I will have a link to each of them in the description below. Have fun reading the little stories that I created for them. Uh, the Armored Courier Truck, I believe, is my most downloaded vehicle. It's also the one that took the longest to create. Anyway, so I don't have a chat today. Uh, so I'm going to base my car design off of a random word generator on my phone here. So let's uh, get that going. Okay, so <laughs> the uh, first set of words that I got was actually undress widow. What? It, I, mm, uh, mm. Anyway, the uh, words that I have now are forager, lamp. Forager, lamp. Obviously, one's going to be the make, one's going to be the model. I kind of like the idea of the make being forager. That sounds like something that I can make, you know, like safari vehicles and stuff with. So this is going to be the forager lamp. Here's all the other cars. Well, the ones that are still in the game, by the way. Uh, I don't know what happened to this. That's a disaster, whatever that is. Huh? Oh, whoops. 1946, not 1846. Generate. 2014. I don't know if you can see that. 20, 2014. So this is going to be the 2014... I meant for that to land on the bed. It did not. <laughs> the 2014 Forager Lamp. All right, the Forager Lamp. I've made a couple of pickup trucks already. I feel like the Forager Lamp would actually be more of like an off-road capable light vehicle for some reason. I don't know why the game gives me, or the name gives me that that uh, feeling. So I, I don't actually think it would be a truck, despite having the name Forager. Are lamps light? Lamps are lights! Got it. I got it, Martha. My cat's over here. You might hear her meowing later. She's looking at me. I just woke her up. She's very angry. Hi, Martha. You can go back to sleep. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to make it a light vehicle because lamps are light. So it looks like the highest we go is 2011. So this is actually going to be uh, 11, a 2011 body style, which means I'm restricted to these body types here. So I'm going to go with the 2011 sedan. I mean, sure. Okay. This is, we're going to try and make this an off-road capable sedan. Now, hopefully I can put four wheel drive. Um, so we want the body to be lightweight. I'm going to go with partial aluminum for this car. And I'm going to give it a light truck frame. You'll Because off-road, it's like a police cruiser. I don't know if you know this, but the Ford Crown Victoria. Victoria? Victoria? You know the one. Has a truck frame. Didn't know that until we had to have a stolen van recovered from up on top of a mountain. And we called the police and we were like, yo, make sure you bring trucks because it's a mountain and there's no paved road. And they showed up in their patrol cars and we were just like, eh. But they were able to keep up with us because their freaking patrol cars have truck frames. They have the suspension travel of a, a Ford Ranger. And we were just like, what? According to the cop. That's what the cop said when I asked him how they were keeping up with us. He said that 
their patrol cars, the marked patrol cars, the, the Fords, have the same suspension setup and suspension travel as a Ford Ranger. I'm going to go with AHS Steel. I forgot what this means. Transverse is this way, right? Um, double wishbones all around. Obviously, we're going to up the quality because that doesn't matter here. Yeah. Oh, no. I need to make an engine. Uh, this will be the off-road... Snake bowl. I don't know, man. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, uh, we're gonna make this a sixty degree V. Six, eight, six. I feel like six is adequate for off roading. Not every vehicle we make needs to have a ginormous engine in it. Uh, our patrol truck had a four cylinder, and that was horrible. The engine does not fit. I haven't made the engine yet. Thanks. I feel like a V6 works. What? Your face doesn't fit. What's the problem? Oh, the whiff. There we go. Bring that down a bit too. All wheel drive, four by four. Okay. Uh oh, uh, magnesium, I guess. I don't know. Uh, overhead cam, four valve. We'll make it out of uh, cast iron. No, aluminum, VVL. That looks like a fair engine, right? Uh, yeah. Look at it. That looks good, right? That's an engine. That's that'll get you. That'll get you going. Crank. I want strong. High torque, con rods, we want something super strong, so light titanium, um, forged, I guess, quality up, oh, I don't remember how to do any of this, I think we save that until we have shibidibidibidibidibidibop, do we want it to be naturally, nationally? <laughs> Martha, I have brain damage. Do you want it to be naturally aspirated? I'm thinking so. Kitty cat? Okay. It, can I have a catalytic converter? No? Okay. Uh, reverse flow and baffled. Lowering compression at ignition timing. Okay, so I don't make tutorials for this stuff because I don't know actually know what I'm doing. So I'm going to fast forward this part because this has already been recording for 27 minutes. I still need to build the vehicle and also drive it. So um, if you're interested in this stuff, let me know in the comments. I try to keep as much in as possible, but the design process is the longest part, and we haven't even gotten there yet. So I'm going to fix the engine and fast forward. All right? Three, two, one. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. nice. Aggression. Aggression. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Um, very quick uh, time lapse there. I might have actually just left that in normally. I, I wasn't looking into uh, making it a horsepower monster, that's why. So I was kind of hoping that we could lower this and make it more uniform. We can make the back stick out. That could be cool. That could be like a radio box or something, you know, because you're going off road. I think we have our colors. Yeah, I think those will be our colors. Okay. What is this car called again? The Forager. Oh, right. It's the Forager Lamp. 
Okay. So with a name like that, obviously we want this thing to be tall with beefy tires, right? I'm going to do my best to make this look like it's some sort of like a radio compartment, like emergency storage or something. And welcome back. Hi, how y'all doing? Sorry, I didn't think you'd want to watch me mess with that crap that for how long that took. Um, no, stop, 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 stop. Um, yeah, it doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't look too bad either, to be completely honest. Some ovular lights. <laughs> Quite an old mod gave me some problems sticking it on. Uh, let's continue <laughs> with our lives. See, this is the one thing I, I don't understand why this isn't a thing. So, with the fixtures... You don't have a plus color option. You can make it the color of other things on the car. But you cannot make these things their own color. So I can't make... Let's say I wanted this to be like an emergency radio box or something. I can't make it orange or yellow. Because orange and yellow are not colors that exist already on the vehicle. So I, I've kind of just been... Been waiting on that? Is that is it this? It does now. <gasps> How did I even do that? Add orange plastic orange. Oh my god, look at that. I figured out the thing that I was just complaining about. Have we been able to do this the whole time? Okay, so plus, plastic, yellow, orange. For God's sake, how long have we been able to do that? Like, seriously, all my other cars, I've been, like, super salty that I can't change the color of the accessories. Is it just because I've been dumb this whole time? It's an apt possibility, ladies and gentlemen. I like it. Okay, now for the main lights. So the main lights, unfortunately, have to be something modern, which is not my forte in this game. Which is, again, I'm, I'm a little sad that I rolled 2014, now 2011 because of body style restrictions. But still, I rolled into the 2000s with my little generator thing. Which, definitely not my aesthetic. I can't think of many cars from the 2000s that I actually like as far as looking in, at them. Um, I am... Definitely a person of the uh, earlier years. Whoops. Okay, that broke the headlights. Oh, no, they went back. Okay. See, even with that, though, those look okay, but now the headlights are over the fender line. So if you ever needed to replace this fender, this it would be a really weirdly cut fender because they have to go around the headlights. So, no third-party fenders for you. <laughs> then again, I guess every car has vehicle-specific fenders. This looks the perfect shape, actually, for this little space here. Whoops. Okay, the sizing tool is starting to piss me off a little bit. There we go. Uh, 
I mean, it's not looking too bad, is it? I'm still not really a fan of the headlights, but I'm kind of, I'm working with the space that I have here. Uh, well, yeah, let's chill out. Let's come in a little bit and go up a little bit. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. There we go. So then, I feel like somebody who is like, yeah, I'm mounting a bunch of stuff to the back of my car would then be like, um, I need to install auxiliaries now because I've blocked these functions on my car. So they would go and they would get themselves like a hole drill, you know, drill a couple holes in their bumper and install some aftermarkets like this. Maybe not exactly like that, maybe more like this. You know, you gotta be responsible if you're safariing. You're gonna stick a bunch of stuff on the back of your car that's gonna block your tail and reverse lights? Make sure you put on another set of tail and reverse lights. Just saying. Don't know how you would drill through plastic like this to mount the box or the gas can, but if you figure it out, put in another set of lights. It's not that hard, it's just some wiring. You can connect them to the existing lights and everything. Okay, so this car does have a dual exhaust in the engine setting, so we will give it a dual exhaust here. And you know what? I think that's the body done, unless we want to put on like a decal or something, which uh, it's technically not a four by four, it's all wheel drive, so we're not gonna go that far. Um, I was gonna do badging. Well, let me put the octopus on and I'll make a decision. Yeah, it looks fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the body of the Forager lamp. We will change the rims as soon as we get the wheels installed. So let's go over to the wheels. It's going to be all-wheel drive with a manual six-speed. Uh, top speed of, I would say, 100 and 150 sounds fair. Uh, we want manual lock. No, automatic uh Automatic lockers. Distribution quality all the way up. Uh, radial tires, and these need to be chunky off roaders. They are now. Tire width. And we're going to bump up the tire diameter. Uh, we will be able to change. The ride height in a second. So you give me a sec. Um, solid six piston disc with large brake or things. We're gonna go drums in the back. Off road skid tray, cooling flaps. And then in the seats, we'll put a bench in both the front and the back. Interior will be sport. We'll give it a luxury informant system. Um, power steering, variable electric, CC plus ABS, and we'll give it advanced 2010s safety equipment. The spring, oh. 
active sport semi adaptive that actually does not look too bad to be honest Okay, the ride height is a little extreme at that level, so let's go down a little bit. Just a little bit. There she is. Surprisingly, our over understeer is not a disaster. We don't seem to have wheel spin. Let's export the vehicle to BMG Drive and see what happens. We will name it the Forager Lamp. Exporting. All right. I will see you guys finally an hour and 22 minutes in. I'll see you in Beeman G Drive. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Forager lamp in the flesh. Let's see what the lights do. Oh, wow. The rack lights actually work now? They actually did not before. Oh, God. I can't see anything. Oh, no. What lights are turning on that are blinding us? It's the reverse lights. I might need to change something before I upload this publicly then. Anyway. Should be a stick. It is. Let's see how she does. Oh, wow. It drives. It actually drives quite well. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is easily one of the best driving cars I've ever made. Maybe that means that I finally know what I'm doing in automation. Oh god. Ooh. I forgot that I turbocharged it too. Well, it is supposed to be an off-roader. So for off-roading, we probably have to turn off ESC, right? Yeah. I want to do a top speed test real quick. I'm going to try and do it on the highway without crashing into one of these guys. Don't ask why I hit the clutch when I brake. It's just... I guess habit is the correct word. I've killed my fair share of stick shift cars by braking improperly. All right, I need to go actually to beginning over here. Okay, let's go. Whoops. I had the wheel turned, I think. Just a touch, just a touch. Sorry about the lag. That 
was third. It's easy to miss shift with this shifter, the Logitechs. <laughs> oh, finally got into an accident. Ah, we look fine. Let's get out of here. Ooh. Okay. We'll have to take it to grid map to do an actual top speed test, I think. For now, let's get over to the mines. Ooh! Hoo <laughs> Baby! Let's get it over to the mines and test the off-roading capabilities, because it is built as an off-roader. Okay. So we're here at the mines. I've got the headlights on, but I am driving from hood view, so I don't get blinded. All right, automation headlights do not work in BMG apparently. So we're gonna go ahead and oh no, they do a little bit. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Let's take a stop here. We'll adjust our camera view and turn off the lights so we can see. And let's continue with the off-road area. Yeah. You know what I'm finding interesting? The car still looks metallic in Beam G Drive. Before, no matter what you did, any automation car that you ported over would have a flat paint job. So it actually did not matter what material you made things out of because they would all just look like plastic. Now you can see the parts of the car that I've made out of plastic and you can see the parts of the car that I've made out of metal. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes! You want our off-road through British Columbia? This is your car. I lost the antenna. <laughs> no, this is gone. Yes, the ovular roof rack lights are a little odd, but... I could see a manufacturing company making lights in that shape! Not even a problem. Let's get her turned around. That's the kind of off-roader you want, right? Maybe I should hit the brakes a little bit. <laughs> Let's try to go over this 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 little rock right here. Okay. Well, we can't win them all, right? So I had the question: um, Are you going to be using your steering wheel setup for all car videos going forward? Um, the answer to that question is I don't know. I might. I definitely like having it when I'm recording Beam and G Drive. Um, makes it more fun for me. Especially now that I've added the new knob. It gives the steering wheel a better, or the shifter, a better height. And I feel like it gives it a better throw. Hold on. I had problems doing this with the oil hopper. 
Oh, I got a pretty high. I got a pretty high. We're sliding. We're sliding. I've got the brakes locked. Um. All right. Turn the wheel. Turn the wheel. Now in the hopper, we we have to be in fourth gear for this. Ah. Maybe we should use the lockers. Yeah. Let's try now. Well, let's let's go back down and then try again. to treat should we try the other mine shaft the hard one let's try it let's try it let's do it you got next game this is the forger lamp it can <gasps> okay it might not be able to take on that oh god it's all right 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 it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> oh no it looks quite injured this Oh no! Well, good thing we have a spare. Can it still go with three wheels? Oh. Alright, let's get a basic speed test off of this truck, which you haven't actually been properly introduced to yet. This is the YouTube series truck. This is going to be my base model vehicle for everything that I do in Beam and G Drive. If I'm running tests or if I'm just driving around randomly, you will probably be seeing this truck a lot. It is the spawn truck, the D-series that you get naturally as the default truck with some aesthetic modifications of my own. I haven't modified the engine or transmission, uh, the gearing, wheels, nothing. I just made it look more like a work truck, gave it an old paint job and a two-tone color. This will be our standard for most vehicle tests unless I'm testing a sedan. Uh, in that case, I'll probably be using a modified Soliad Wendover. Why? I don't know. I don't have reasons for these things. Just do them. Alright, so it looks like the YouTube truck gets up to a speed of almost 100 miles an hour. Really no reason to shift into fifth gear, to be honest. Let's stop it safely and humanely. All right, now again with the forager lamp. Maybe I should use the clutch. I was paying attention to other things, okay? I had to turn off ESC too. So chill chill your beans. I like that the off-road tires make this sound. That's fourth! Okay, so again, if you weren't paying attention earlier, very easy to miss shift with the Logitech shifter. It doesn't really have very good gates. Just broke the car, but it was for demonstration purposes. 
Um, there are mods for these things. So we're going to try again without shifting into fourth at almost top speed already. Actually, I don't even know if that was almost top speed. Let's go! If this thing actually makes it to 150, it'll be the first car I've ever made to actually reach the top speed that I assigned it. There it goes, 152 miles an hour. Let's see if it survives. I just broke reverse. So reverse is doing nothing, it's neutral now. Oh, shoot. So I guess technically, yes, it did survive. Let's flip it around and smash it. Should I hit that little crossbar that I hit with the Ibisha Pessima? I wonder what that would do to an automation car. That's what we're about to find out, huh? Oh, shut up. I used the clutch. Sort of. Gotta be careful, because I can no longer reverse in this car, so... Gotta make sure I watch out for the water pits. This is the best driving car I've ever made. It's amazing. It almost makes me want to go and redo my old cars, but I feel like leaving the cars the way that they were when they were originally created is better. Alright, here we go. That's my engine. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, the engine don't work anymore. Mostly because it's over here now. Yikes. Let's see if the headlights work. Of course they do. It's automation. Blinkers? Yeah, those work too. And the, uh, it did have built-in signals. Uh, brake lights? Yeah, those work too. Well, everybody, this has been the Forger Lamp. Now, um, this isn't going to be uploaded by the time this video is uploaded. I do uh, have several other things to do today. So, when you see this video, the Forager lamp may or may not already be uploaded to Beam G Drive. I've got to go in and take, like, action shots and stuff of it, because they like that kind of thing. So i got to do, you know, the, the BAM, and then the, the BAM, and then the, the BAM, and the, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll take that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Cool. Picture's done. It'll probably be uploaded by the time you see this video. Um, you can either find it at my forum name which is the same as here octopus card door or i'll have it link in the description below um i will probably forget to add the link in the description below unless me saying this in this part of the video while i'm editing reminds me to but enough of that thank you for coming look forward to more of these videos because these are actually really really fun i do enjoy these 
uh, making cars and driving them in Beam and G Drive is a good thing. And it's also very good for streaming. So look forward to streams where I let chat design a car if there's enough people. There have to be enough people, though. You know, just two or three people in chat uh, it doesn't really make it fun. So remember to follow me on Twitch, which is Octopus Car Door as well. Uh, I no longer have the underscore in my name on Twitch. I managed to get my original name back from the void that it was swallowed by. So... Thank you so much for coming, and I'll see y'all in the next one, whenever that may be. Bye. And I hit stop.